can only ever be where you are right now. What is your podcast? It's the major investment in your life, right? The journey will always be your journey. Yes, welcome back to the BDP, my friends. Today, we're going to be diving in on how to outgrow your neediness. But you're seeing this girl, you're seeing this guy, and you just are so infatuated to the point where you've lost yourself. You let go of what your path is in this journey, and you just need them so bad. And this can manifest in so many ways. It can manifest in mentalities. And most certainly, if it is, definitely towards your tactical execution in these relationships, in these, whether it be just casual, just seeing this person on the on the uh, infrequent, or whether it is in a more deeper relationship. You know, it's something that we we talk about a lot. I talk about a lot in different fragments and different aspects as to what neediness is, where it comes out of. I'm pretty sure we did a pot of probably a few months ago now, maybe even further back, just how to overcome your neediness. Well, I had a lot of videos on this, but today's photo is based on a uh, a bit of a follow-on. A bit of a follow-on. If you guys track back to BDP95, I believe it's 95. I'm actually, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i be able to get it because he sent me in the email. This is a follow-on. You could almost consider a part two to BDP95. Basically, that guy... Uh, I can't even remember exactly what that potter was about. It had something to, oh, the Mr. The Mr. Needy Nice Guy. That's what it was about. Yes, sir. Here we go. So it was on, uh, he reached out to me because he was worried that with this girl he had met online, I'm not sure what date, I think it could have been Bumble. It could have been, I don't know. It could have been Tinder. I don't know. But it was an online forum. It definitely was not cold approach. And he met this girl and he was basically reaching out to me preemptively, I believe, in that potter. Could be mistaken, but he reached out, just making sure that he wasn't going to be, that's right, falling into the trap of being the Mr. Needy Nice Guy, which he used to be. And so since then, he actually reached out and we did a full-on one-hour coaching session together uh, in which he had progressed into that relationship and we had to talk a lot about honoring the sexual trust she was placing in her. I dropped some content from that on Instagram. I don't think I made an actual video of that on the channel. And now that brings us to today where he sent me an email this morning f- right out of the marcha fields, fresh off the fields. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll get into some other stuff. We'll get some more context. But actually, I'm kind of going into the context right now. But he sent me that. And this email today is kind of like a progression. It's almost like the post. It's it's what's happened over these um, a couple of months. It's really been probably a little bit longer, actually. How the relationship has manifested and how he's checking himself on his neediness and it was really quite an enlightening email. When I was reading the message this morning, I could not help but commend him on his ability to outgrow his neediness and to be able to get to a place in life. And I said this to a guy just uh, the other day. Hang on a sec. Chot the mat. The matcha is good. The matcha is good. Oh, shit. Fresh. Uh, there was a guy that I... Uh, Chris, I think he's, he's got two names, Jared or Chris. Shout out to Jared or Chris, who sent me a message on the gram, at Tang one a, a similar thing, actually. Similar thing. Holy shit. Oh, fuck yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this guy's message as well. So I need to pin that in my mind. There is two contexts. And this is like, you know where this is organic. You know this is organic when this is just like, it's perfect. Because he sent me a message about his detachment and our growing of neediness. And how I commended him on his ability to be able to actually see that. Because I don't remember these, all these, I'm just paraphrasing what I said to him, but it was something along the lines of the ability to see your own growth is just as impressive as the growth itself. And within that little one little package right there, that encapsulates a whole, a whole podcast, really, a whole entire philosophy on how there are stages of growth that we go through in which that you are presented with a fact that I have work to do. All right, you step in, whether it's this girl that you've just met on the street, you just met her in the club, you're a girl that's just met a guy, whether it be through online or through your social circle or through work or whatever. And so you're, you're presented with this scenario and now you have a fresh opportunity to see if you can eclipse the person you once were. And so you go through this interaction and you are constantly presented with feedback feedback as to how you're going. Am I attached to this person? Do I need their validation in a uh, 
social space? Do I need their validation in a physical space? Do I need them in a mental space? And maybe even a more deeply seated place from just someone validating me as a human being in general. And that's why I want to be with this person, et cetera, et cetera. It can just be, it, there's a plethora, there's myriad ways in which this can manifest. And you're just presented with opportunities of where is pass or fail. Do you pass this? Are you able to detach from that? And when you go through that, you may you may make some mistakes, you may pass the flying colors in other areas, but when it's all said and done, whether it's because she left you or he left you because that now this guy's just or he's just this person's just not evolved enough. This person's just not on the same level as me. They need time to grow on their own. Completely devoid from an egoic attachment of themselves to being like, oh, I'm better than this person. No, none of that. None of that shit. It's just that. I see that this person has so much work to do on their own. So I'm going to let them do that. I'm going to set them free and let them do that. And so whether it was, uh, you would hope, I would hope, that that's, uh, that's probably best case scenario in someone letting you go. But let's be honest here, when someone lets you go, it might not be necessarily that clean, that evolved, that highly empathetic way of going about things. But however it was ended, you eventually got to this point in which that you were in the post able to look at well let's take a full account you get you have, we all have this opportunity we all have this opportunity in the post of every interaction in our lives to take a full account of whether i will be honest with myself about what actually happened i'm going to take a full account of my 50 i'm going to look at all my mentalities all my behaviors throughout this interaction whether it be and this this applies to everything this is to those of you that are learning cold approach this is to those of you that have just gone on one tinder date one day from this online medium. This is one this is something that you can apply in your family. I was doing it with my family this morning. You know, it's in your friends, business relationships. We always are presented with this opportunity to take a full strip down of our 50. How did I behave? How did I set up my mentalities? How did I treat this person? How did I treat myself? And you can just have this time and we all have this time to look at ourselves. And if you can if you can step back and look at, well, man, this is what I did well, but this is definitely where I need to improve. These are the improvements that I need to make. And you just get a full strip down of that. You know, that to me is just as impressive as you actually being able to say in the next interaction, execute on those improvements and actually make the improvements. Because it's one thing to go through an experience and fuck up and then just go on to the next experience. You know, there's something to be said for not just giving up on life in general, for sure. But to me, it's actually, if not just as impressive, it's more impressive to me to actually have the honesty, the humility to step back and go, this is what needs to be changed. Or when you do make those changes, progressing forward, this is what I did change. You know, this is how I was able to change. I'm so much better now. I'm so much more developed and empathetic and I can look back on the previous interactions and look at where I was fucking up. Holy shit. <laughs> oh shit so yeah that's where we're going with this pod we've got two different contexts really i just i was only planning on going on one we got two two plans for one <laughs> for those of you if you have not seen i haven't even seen the movie myself but if you go into youtube and you type in uh will ferrell best of bloopers it's, it's him wearing a cowboy hat. I forgot what the name of the movie is, but if you type in two plums for one into YouTube with Will Ferrell, it's one of the funniest videos you'll ever see. If you ever need a good laugh, just type in two plums for one. <laughs> yeah, thank me later. So, yeah, so that, that's where we're coming at today. Today is a uh, fresh Monday. Uh, yeah, well, there's so many other things. There's so many, there's so, I always, because we've been diving straight into the tactics of things, I often forget to update you guys with so much stuff. Uh, we've just been doing a shit ton of co- I just got done coaching an infill breakdown session. Uh, I've been doing a lot of hustling lately. Game of Thrones episode one, season eight has just been released today. I am so fucking hyped. I can't wait to see it. I'll watch it tonight once all the work is done. I'm so excited for the GOT. And yeah, we're going to dive straight into this. Uh, I think that's it. If, if not in the outro to do things with boot camps, New York boot camps coming up, all that shit, hit me up on the ground, movie tank one, that stuff will be in the outro. I'm sure it was in the intro for those of you on the audio stuff. So without further ado, let's just, let's just dive into my man's uh, big email. So I'm going to go in on the main meet. At some point, I'm going to go into that Instagram context from uh, Chris, 
because it'll die. It'll, it'll it'll become relevant. But for the most part, it's uh, it's this guy's email that I got sent this morning. It's like a, it's just a full package. It's just a full package for those of you that saw or that listen or saw episode ninety five. And now that you know that we work together, this is going to be the wrap up now, and this is the wrap up. So that's what's so good about it. Why I'm so excited for it. Yeah, let's do it. So I'm just going to cut the first part of the email because it's not really just a few little, a uh, little bit of context for me. <clears throat> okay, here we go. So he says to me, since our one hour session last month, we spoke about me in quotes, honoring C's, C's just short for her name, uh, trust in me sexually. So honoring C's trust in me sexually. And I decided to bring her over to my place for a movie and lunch. Despite being alone with her, only some making out occurred, but nothing more. I chose to stay within myself and not progress any further sexually. Just take a pause here. That's in reference to one of my videos. Ah, it's me in the kitchen. It's like, I forgot the name of the video, but it's something to do with, oh, advice to a virgin's first date. That's what I'm talking about there in terms of staying within yourself. So if you want to know more about that, advice to virgins on a first date, it's me in a dark kind of kitchen looking thing. Just go back on the channel. You'll find it. Continuing his message. He says to me, since that fourth date, our communication started to dwindle. She went traveling and partying for St. Patty's Day, all while any texting was very minimum. She also went away to, hold up, got to reset here. So she went away to a certain country to do something for her work. I'm leaving those details out. And uh, a week later, communication still very minimum. And we still haven't gotten yet since that point. After she came back a few weeks ago, she brought up that she's been dealing with a lot of anxiety and depression and has been going through a rough time lately. She claims that this is the reason why she's been distant with me and that she wanted to be honest about it now because, in quotes, I've been amazing, end quotes. Although I've been empathetic about this, I honestly find that hard to believe considering she's still been meeting up with her friends and hitting up the bars, etc., etc. Currently, we haven't seen each other since last month. So I feel like everything is completely off. This past Thursday, I was hoping for the truth and asked if anything's changed for her in regards to the two of us. And she said, <clears throat> in quotes, what hasn't changed is how I feel about you. What has changed is my situation, which complicates things, end quotes, which she kept saying it was her anxiety and depression. She was adamant about it being too personal to dive into and that she was diagnosed last year, hates talking about it. I replied by saying, I'm only just concerned that I miss seeing her and that she can be open with me and talk to me about it if she ever needed to. And all she said was, in quotes, I know, I appreciate it, end quotes. It's interesting. We'll dive back to that little last bit there. <clears throat> Continuing the message. Since this conversation, I haven't reached back out to her. I haven't reached back out to her. And at this time, I've ultimately decided that I need to step away from this girl. I feel that this whole experience has exhausted me and made me forget who I am and the progress I've been striving for. Plus, I can no longer handle not truly knowing what's going on and having to overthink it all the time. It's just not healthy for me. I do hold myself partially accountable for this though. I feel like the neediness may have slipped in during our time together, so I have no excuses for that and need to keep working on it. The door will always be open for her since I really do care about her, but for right now, my focus and energy is being brought back to myself and rebuilding my temple again. Any feedback and advice on my current direction and mindset will be greatly appreciated. Thanks for your time reading this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. What a message. What a message. It's even more exciting reading it out. Like I read it in my mind this morning, but reading it out in, like, in the real voice, it's even more inspirational. Ooh, yeah. Again. Okay. Much of life is in. So my my thought process is, do I now park that and go and read you the Instagram context from a man, Chris, that's on similar lines? Not as intense, though. It's not as intense as this. I think, I think I'm going to leave that for now. I think we're just going to stay with Kay, with this guy for now. Um, Hold up. Yeah, I just referred to him as Kay. I just referred to him as Kay. Uh, I think that's probably what I referred to him in Potter 95 as well. Hmm, Okay. So I already responded to him in an email, but basically my response to him in an email was saying that I would respond to him further in the potter. But basically, man, 
yeah, there's a couple of things I want to dive into. But when you when I when I look at that message and when I look at what has transpired between these two, and really at this point, you should probably press, press hit pause on this poto if you've not listened to poto ninety five. At least to get the context of that. You maybe don't need to listen to all of Potter 95, but it would probably help you if you really want to dive in on this and you really want to sink your teeth in to go back to Potter 95 and just listen to the context of that one, which is in the first 20 minutes or so. Then you could come back to this. So it's because you kind of you're probably gonna be uh you're probably gonna be missing a step if you're not gonna but yeah, if you want to dive deep, if you want to dive deep, just know that I'm gonna skip over that now. I'm not gonna constantly be referring back to that. So he's gone through this experience now, and the first thing I said to him, the first thing I think about when you tell him, we were talking about over outgrowing your neediness, is that look at what he's done here. Look at what he's done. He stepped back from the experience, and that's what got me so excited and so inspired by it, which is that he's been able to step back from the experience and take accountability for it and say, I, I most likely fucked up somewhere in this interaction with this girl, most likely in our one-to-one. And that's my best guess as well. And in that little short brief response I said to him, which I will now dive into much more deeply now, which is that I said at the beginning of this pod, really, but let's go in on a big time here. You strip yourself down out of every interaction, strip your 50 down. You come out of it, regardless of how she's treated you, regardless of how she's reacted to you. And if you're a girl, just flip the example here, strip your own 50 down. Look out, what could I have improved upon? Always start with the positive. Always look out what you did, what you think you did well. So that primes you. That gets you in a good emotional space to even want to improve, to even want to work. If you start in a negative space, it's super unlikely you're going to want to make any legitimate, meaningful improvements because you're just feeling shit. So let's look at what you did well. You know, the fact that for this guy, I know for sure because we had the one on, we had a one-on-one session for an entire hour. I know that I know that he was at least attempting into this interaction to push things forward and to honor the sexual trust in her. How do I know this? Because the fact that he set up the day four at his place for a movie and lunch, you know, he was thinking coming into our session for the hour session, he was such a Mr. Needy Nice guy that he was just going to set up for another coffee date or set up for another uh, low key thing. But the thing is, is that she's already honored that they've already had a lot of physical back and forward in the car, et cetera, before this. So what I'm saying is like, Hey, push this forward. So I can say to him right now, Listen, Kev, one thing that you did really well right off the bat was that you already set up the day four for a more intimate space. You broke down past the barriers of your Mr. Needy Nice Guy to, by default, incline to wanting to go and play it safe by, let's do another coffee day. Let's do another in the park day. But no, you're beyond that now. She's put, she's placed the trust in you. She's a, She's placed the trust in you in which that, listen, I'm attracted, so take me there. And this is a big thing. This is a big thing that you need to get your head wrapped around, which is that when the feminine places the trust in the masculine that I'm sexually attracted to you, so take me there. If you don't honor that, then what you find is that sends the opposite. It sends a signal in the opposite in which that you can either internally or externally interpret that in a negative way for her. She can interpret that in an internally negative way in which that, oh shit, am I not enough for him? Was I not sexually attractive enough for him to want to progress this? She can interpret that in an external way in which that, in a negative sense, in which that, oh, well, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Well, this guy is just this needy, nice puppy dog, doesn't want to push it, doesn't want to step up, right? Then I'm not going to waste my time with this guy. So fuck this guy. I'm moving on. So girls can interpret it in either an internal or external way. Which way is it going to be? Depends on the girl. But I know a lot of girls, it goes back and forward. And that's what happens when you don't honor the trust, when the feminine puts the trust in you. Listen, I'm into you. Take me there. And you don't honor that. You betray her trust. You betray it. And it just causes uh, all kinds of fireworks in the relationship, in the interaction all all around. So, Kay, the first thing that you did here, the fact that you progressed the interaction to say, hey, come to my place. We're going to do a movie and chill. For me, in my words, we'll do that Disney and chill. And uh, for those of you that even think, like, think that the Disney and Chill is just like a play on words, no, it's not. It's not. If explicitly I know this girl's in Disney, I'm in a Disney, we're doing Disney and Chill. What type of music do you think I was listening to? Hype you up for this potter, sir. Yeah, you know. 
You already know it. That two worlds. Phil Collins, baby. So, the fact that you're setting off for that, there's a big win there. And I want you to take that. I want you to take that because now flipping script to uh, Chris's message or uh, Cree's message, he was saying to me that he was talking about all the things that he could see in light of his, his improvement. You need to be able to see this. You need to be able to see where you improve because that's how you're going to be able to make changes in the future as well. So now, stripping it down even further. Let's strip down even further to this guy's 50. And just to keep the perspective here, this is how you outgrow your neediness. By taking a full account of yourself. By bringing awareness to it. Because most, this is the sad thing, my friends. The sad thing is that most people are not even aware of their own needy attachments. Most people are just blindly walking around thinking that their behavior is acceptable. No, your needy attachment is not acceptable. And your life will only mirror that and reflect that in which that people don't want to spend time with you. They don't want to be around you. You just keep meeting these dead ends with people, whether it be they don't even want to go out for the second date. They don't even want to see you again after the first uh, sexual encounter. They don't even want to get into a long-term potential monogamous relationship with you or something uh, even more, I would say, uh, I was going to say evolved. Let's just say it's something even more crazy, more interesting to do with an open relationship that allows for multiple partners. They don't even want to entertain that with you because you're just so attached to them. You're, just, you're conveying these energetic waves in which that I need you in my life for this and that other reason. So that person has no choice. It's no choice and that behavior is just, it's not acceptable, but most people are not aware of it. They're not even aware of it. So when we're stripping down our 50, that's how we're, that's awareness right there. We're bringing this awareness in. So uh, let me reset it. Also guys, my apologies. If there was a loud buzzing noise in the background, it sounds like someone is uh, building their own temple out there. I, I, you probably couldn't though, because uh, the potter mic is pretty damn good, but it's pissing me off. So I had to uh, just take a second and close the window. Anyways, back on it. So when we're talking about, Got, continuing the strip down here. Now, the next part of the strip down, once you go through the positives, is the improvements to make. What kind of improvements when we're looking at it here, Kay, is that you kind of alluded to it. You talked about how most likely you were conveying some form of neediness in person during that movie lunch day. And you did, you did, you did say to me that you were playing within yourself. You weren't trying to push it too far sexually. And therein lies the question mark. Now, it's not an X or a tick. I'm not giving you an X or a tick. I'm not saying, oh, you definitely fucked up there or you definitely passed the flying cut. I don't know. The question mark. I would say if, and here's one of my clients, I would ask you as one of my clients to look at that as a question mark. When you're telling me that you feel like most likely you're conveying some form of neediness in person in this movie lunch date and that you are also doing your best to, you didn't take it beyond the makeout. That's what you said to me. And listen, this is actually, whoa, we're going to dive in deep here because because of God's sakes, this is not the first time, for those of you listening, this is not the first time these two have made out. These two have had several interactions, if not several, definitely a couple. I know at a minimum, a couple makeouts already. One time in the car and one time previous to that, I believe, because they were out with friends before that. That was probably 95. Ooh, <laughs> so I'm just, I get excited about my own memory. It's good. Uh, it's the matcha, for sure, it's the matcha. So, so now, but oh, hang on, hang on, because you guys might be, so there's so much to, to just, we've got to take our time with this, this is what I'm saying here, because there's so many pieces to the puzzle I've got to fit in here. The reason why I'm thinking that this is a question mark, because if you go back to that Advice to Virgins video, uh, and that whole idea, the whole concept behind that video was you must play within yourself. You can only rise to the level of your training. You should not expect anything outside of yourself that you have no idea of. And that if you try and step too far out of yourself, you're only going to convey a front. It's a front. It's the, it's the, it's the cub pretending to be the tiger. Right, it's it's the uh, it's the baby pretending to be the lion. It's it's you roaring a little too loud right? when you didn't need to. And what that conveys to a girl is that oh, this guy's just not he's not actually where I thought he was. You know, he's not he's not comfortable. He's not able to accept himself, and so he's trying to step up to visualizations, expectations outside of himself. I don't need that. I don't need that because it's 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 it's, it's toxic. It's very 
it's uh it's sticky it's a sticky it's a sticky feeling when you're with someone it's a humidity when you're when you're with you with someone that is not just able to comfortably accept where they're at and just play within that so that's the whole concept behind that video so when he tells me that i invited her so i stepped it up we went back to my place for the movie and chill and uh, I, we just kept it at the makeout because that's where I felt I was comfortable at. Now listen, this is where the question mark is. Because if you two have already made out, you've all, at several times in different locations, in different ways, and she was, uh, and it's more than just like the casual, it wasn't just a casual peck either. I believe out some of the explicit details here that we went into during our session, but just between you and me, Kev, you know there has been some a little bit further sexual progression there in terms of her honoring that trust within you. You know, it wasn't sex, but there was there was some stuff going on. So the question mark here, what I want you to look at is were you playing within yourself or were you too scared to push? Now, listen, the way I want you to visualize this is because I can I can feel the confusion coming in your mind as to, well, to what extent is it me just playing within myself and when do I cross the line into playing with the outside of myself? I can, I can sense that question coming in. And to me, to me, it is basically the borderline between those two is when you start to lose yourself. When you play outside of yourself, you lose yourself. How do you know you lost yourself? You don't even recognize yourself at that point. You, you, you're saying things you would never, ever say. You are acting in a way that you would never, ever act, in which that you don't even recognize this. And trust me, as dudes, as dudes, you're a dude listening to this, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when you get around an attractive girl and you just start saying shit like, where the fuck did that come from? I never, I never say that. I'm never like this with my friends. I'm never like this with my close friends, with my close family. And that's how you know that if you try and sexually progress things too quickly to the point at which that you are now playing outside of your skill set, you, you just you don't even feel like you. You don't even feel like that. It wasn't even Adam. It wasn't even Kay who was doing that. That was, that was my attempt to try and live up to some other expectation outside of myself. That's the way I check it. But, but coming coming back now, the way that you know that you were playing within yourself, but not too much to the point of scarcity, to the point of which that actually you were just so afraid of pushing the button here that you weren't even willing to touch the button. Like to wait, the way they know that you weren't that, but you were actually just tapping on the button, tapping on the button, pushing things forward, is that you never really lost sight of who you were. There was some nerves, there was some anxiety for sure, but you just didn't take yourself beyond that. And listen, the... I can't, I can't paint it any more clearly than that without giving you a real-world example. So this is what I was thinking about, how I was going to be able to paint this in, because, listen, it's, you're going to have to be there. It has to be a one-to-one -one situation. It's, you have to give me an example. So let me say, let me, let me think back here. Which type of wish, 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 there's so many, there's so many. Uh, hmm. I can always use, I can always, and I do, I do always use that first pull. The first girl I ever brought back from a cold approach situation. I've, I've used that quite a few times because I completely fucked that. I just completely obliterated that. No, I've got a better one. Got a better one. There's this girl, that's, um, yeah, she was cold approach. Yeah, but it was like a, it was like a, it was like, a, it was like a warm cold, it was a warm and cold approach to the extent of which that it was a cold approach within a gym. So it was not cold approach in terms of, uh, out on the street, like like a lot of you guys would expect, or in a club. But this is a cold approach in a gym, so it's kind of you could kind of call it lukewarm because we'd seen each other a couple times before, but but we had never spoken before, and uh, we didn't have any kind of uh, warm introduction, that's for sure. So I go and I approach this girl, and uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give too many details here because we're still in contact. But let's just say that uh, how am I going to refer to her? Uh, I should not use her name. I should not use her name. Yeah, I said, okay, we'll go, for, we'll go for Blake name. We'll call her Jenna. We'll call her Jenna because I refer to all girls as Jenna for the most part. Although there is one girl that I know that is Jenna, but I think she knows this is not her. So I'm going to call her Jenna anyway. Anyways, I met her at the gym and straightforward scenario. Straightforward scenario. We, we, we link up 
Uh, we changed digits. I decided that, oh, let's meet up. Coffee, tea, typical, meet her in the mall. Coffee, tea, that was cool. Make out on the first date, that was cool. Progress to the second date, so for day three. This, and then I go forward, forward with the talk and I say at the start, yo, listen, uh, if you're down, I'd love to keep things open, love to keep things casual. We can we can kick it from here, but if not, don't worry about it. We'll keep it as something cool and chill as friends. She agrees. She goes, cool, that's fine. I'm happy to progress things. And I'm like, cool. So we go out, we go get some food and we bust back to my place. Now, this is where I fuck up the sexual progression. What? Not fuck up. Not fuck up. I, it'll, it'll progress. You will see why I want to bring up this story as to being able to paint out whether you were playing within yourself or not. So at this point, this was not my first, I would say this is like, I don't know, 10 to 15, maybe 10 to 15. I pretty much, the reason why I can say 10 to 15 is because I essentially stopped counting. Uh, when a guy's like, guys that are like really dependent on results will say to me, Adam, Adam, how many lace from cold proof have you had? I literally couldn't tell you. How many dates have you had? I don't know, couldn't tell you because I don't count those things. You know, if at the beginning of your journey, it's probably, it is necessary to count those things just to keep yourself on track, laying your foundations, but you got to go let go of that. You got to let go of that game. You got to let go of that raft to be able to evolve and progress. It serves no purpose at a certain point, but I remember this being earlier in the journey and I think maybe this might have been the 10th, somewhere between 10th or 15th time, I brought a girl back to my place and was attempting to learn the physical play between the masculine and feminine energy here from a relative cold approach situation. So we're back in my, we're back in the bedroom. Okay. Uh, what do we watch? What do we watch? I don't even think we watched anything. I don't even think there was any Disney and chill. I had played some guitar for her and that was cool. And we started making out on my, on my bed. That's right. Start playing some guitar. A little, uh, I hate that I love you by Neo. Always a good song, really easy song to play on guitar. All girls love it as well. So for those of you that are learning guitar, that's a song I would highly recommend learning. Really easy as well. Not even finger style. I mean, of course I play it in finger style, but you can use a pick. Anyways, um, <laughs> for those of you who are into guitar, it's a really good one. It gets girls. It's very nostalgic. It's very nostalgic. It's a very it's a nice love song. And we played that. And so once I put down that guitar... Oh, and oh, what that was the thing as well is that all girls love to attempt to play it themselves. You know, they say, you play it, like, can I try to play it? You teach me. It's a great little bubble connector. You get her in the bubble with you. And so she's playing. And actually, while she's playing, I decide to make out of her. Great, great time to interject. She's going to say, yo, can you just close your eyes five seconds? I just try to get these chords. Damn, now start making out. Cool. Guitar goes, oh, hold up. I've got to reset here. Give me a sec. So we start making out. The guitar slides down and we uh, lie down on the bed and it starts getting physically amorous. Uh, I think this is winter at the time. So there's a lot of clothes on at this point. Something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind as we don't lose the perspective of why I'm telling this story. So we start making out quite a bit. And yes, I remember she was wearing long black uh, stockings, like leggings, like waist, waist ones, not ones that end at the knee. Like imagine like a tight black legging that goes right up to the waist. And she had a black skirt on top of that. And so as we're making out and as we're getting physically amorous, this is all within my skill set. This is all stuff that I am very comfortable with at this point. Now rewind 10 to 15 interactions of me going through this. If you rewind back to my first uh, every time bring a girl back to my place from the cold approach journey, Completely fuck this. Completely fuck this. I didn't take the time to play the guitar or to watch The Lion King. We was like straight home, straight into the bed, straight to make out. And uh, I couldn't get it up. So much pressure, so much anxiety. I completely stepped outside of my skill set. So listen, that was probably going to be... The reason why I didn't tell that story off the bat is because I've told that story a lot of times. Because it's such a pivotal story. It's such a key story. And it's exactly the point of what I'm trying to pass on to Kay here, which is that I stepped out of myself in that interaction, but that's such a black and white scenario. The reason why I didn't want to tell that is because it's so black and white. It's just like complete, I fucked up all of it. I fucked up all of it. But this is a more nuanced based situation that Kay's in, which is why I want to tell a more nuanced based story, which is why we do the potto. So, Come back to this girl. Come back to Jenna and the uh, the guitar and the bed. So we're making out, and uh, this is all. I'm very comfortable with this. She's very comfortable with me. She's she's kind of glazing over. She's kind of glazing over. For those of you that are sexually <laughs> been involved in a sexual experience of this uh, nature, especially when it comes from 
a true, true polar, polarizing masculine to feminine interaction in which that I came up to her, I started this, she's been out, she's honored that, she's put the trust in me, key point here, she's put the trust in me, when a girl trusts you to take care of her sexually, she'll glaze over, what I mean by glaze over, her eyes, her eyes will glaze over, her energy glazes over, oh, oh. and here's a perfect quote for this, that what you should be doing at this moment is that you don't chase with your eyes, but you feel with your skin. And that is a quote that I just heard yesterday uh, from uh, uh, Diamond No Ace. It's an anime, b- baseball anime, which just it applies perfectly to sexual escalation. It's quite interesting. Don't chase with your eyes, feel with your skin. And when you're honoring the trust that a girl puts in you, when she says, I trust you as a masculine being to take me there sexually, when you honor that trust, she should glaze over. And that's how you read that. A girl that is uncomfortable, a girl that is not ready to let go into that sexual space, her eyes will not glaze over, her energy will not glaze over. So you need to feel this. And you, of course, you will see it with your eyes, but you need to feel this. You need to feel the way she breathes. You need to feel her energy. You need to feel the tension in her muscles, the way that her body moves. You feel all these things. These gives you the indicators. Now, this is... now. So that's really that's awesome tactics, Adam. Thanks for the tactics. Let's bring it back on point here, which is the reason why I'm telling you this is because here's a great thing for Kay to check. Is he able to check this in the moment? That's how you know. This is one way of knowing, am I playing within myself or am I not playing within myself? For me, this is all within myself. This is all within myself that this is not beyond myself to be rubbing her legs, rubbing the inside of her legs, uh, to be kissing her all over the place, to be grabbing her quite firmly by the back of the neck, taking full control in that sense. And all of these little things that I'm describing here, you, you better believe that while not consciously, definitely not consciously, because I this is not the first time this is happening because I've had a few experiences to help ingrain this, but you know that somewhere within my being, I am red light, green lighting this. I am checking within myself. Boom, she comfortable, she comfortable. Boom, she comfortable, she comfortable. Boom, she comfortable, she comfortable. She's, and that's what's happening in this scenario. At no point is she uncomfortable with this. I'm progressing and progressing. And all I'm asking for Kev to do here is to play this back in his mind. When you were going through your interaction, were you checking the comfortability? Were you checking your own comfortability and uncomfortability? And that's interesting. That's interesting. Because I painted it there as in like, I'm checking her comfortability. But for Kay here, he, it's more important for him to be checking his comfortability. Because that's what I'm talking about with the playing within yourself or not. Are you doing things or asking things of yourself that you are not comfortable with? <sighs> Please take a moment for this. Because... When you do things that you are not comfortable with, and I mean seriously not comfortable with, to the point where that, holy shit, I was not ready for this. I've never done this with another girl before. I did this way too quickly. That's a really good sign. That's a really good sign that you were stepped out of yourself. I did this way too quickly. You know what's really interesting about this photo is that this photo has now become a sexual escalation photo, even though it's got nothing. It's not where I wanted to go with this. But we're here. But we're here. Let me just get some water. Hang on. That ginger, son. That ginger. I just finished the matcha. Give me a sec. Hold up. Hold up. Changing my drinks. Got drinks, baby. Uh, Sit down there. Fuck. Oh, actually, I fucked the uh, metal straw for this, for this, uh, because there's no lemon or lime in this. Well, there once was, but I've, I've cycled through. So give me a sec. Because that metal straw can get annoying. I acknowledge that. So, where was I? Okay, yeah. So, it seems that this is becoming a, a masterclass on sexual escalation right now. Because, But it's something important because, it. don't worry, I have not lost the plot. I know that we are talking about how to outgrow your neediness. And what we're doing here is we're still in the strip down. We are still in the strip down of analyzing where this guy may have made a mistake within... Uh, within his needy skills, within his skill set, Anthony needing has creeped in. So don't worry. With that is that just like keeps you where we're at. But let's come back into these micros. 
Because the, there is definitely, I know there's a lot of value in these micros. I, I for sure would have liked to have had these micros when I was coming up. So, yeah, to the point of knowing whether you're playing within or without yourself, I'll try and tie, I'll do, I'll do my best to tie this up here, is that you're, you're rushing it. You're rushing it. You're stepping, you're freaking yourself out. You're not even, you're not even yourself anymore at this point. Like you just, you don't recognize yourself. That's how you know. That's why I was really diving into this. And the, I'll finish up the story with the girl, which is that uh, at a certain point, I'm saying like if things are getting very physically amorous. I take my hand inside her legs, right? I go to rub her right in the sweet spot and she backs up. She, she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. Well, she, was, she didn't necessarily stop me, but I could feel her tense up. And then, and of course, when I sense a girl tense up, that's me, that's me done. Like, okay, that was a comfortability check. She's uncomfortable with this. So I back it up and that's cool. We keep going. And then I think uh, we just keep making out for the next 10 minutes or so. I go again, right? I go to rubber downstairs, down there again. And what's interesting is that she is ridiculously wet. Like I'm talking about water fountain wet right now, but she puts her hand on my hand but doesn't attempt to stop me, just puts her hand on my hand. And it's tense, but she's not like saying, no, no, she's not pulling away from me, still making out me. I'm just, she's, I can tell that whether she hasn't physically been with a guy in a while. So she's really, it's either that, it's either that, or she's not used to this speed of progression because you've got to keep in mind here. We've, we've been out on one day two. We've been on one day two at this point. Met with Jim, went on one day too. There was a, uh, was there a make out on that day too? Barely, barely. Yeah, I don't even think there was that much. I think because she was a, she was more of a shy girl. That's right, she was more of a shy girl. And so we're progressing really quickly here. So the fact that she's at this point, so but even though I know I'm not getting a hard, a hard no, for me it's any sign of uncomfortability from a girl. I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna back it up and try and work it out. And so what I'm painting in here is that, and the reason why, because this is a more nuanced situation, which is that I never at any point stepped out of myself. That's why I, I think that's why I wanted to tell this particular story, which is that to show, to show that even though I knew that I wanted to progress things further, and I did, I did want to progress things further, I was able to bring it up, I was able to pull it back, and I was constantly the entire time reading myself and reading her. But I also, at the same time, was not afraid. Oh, that, that's probably the more relevant point, if you really think about it. Okay, if you listen to this, that's probably the more relevant point, which is that I was never afraid to push that. And even though, but, and so I was willing, and that's the thing here, you have to be willing to lead. Even though I fully acknowledge you should never, and more than acknowledge, recommend, never step out of your, outside of yourself, at the same time, with never stepping outside of yourself, you still have to lead. You still have to push it. And that's where we're going to bring ourselves back up the ladder of this rabbit hole. Kev, the question mark for you is, did I at any point stop leading? And to the higher level point of that, did that convey neediness? As in, I need this to work out and, I, and I'm afraid that if this does not work out, shit. Shit, I'm shit out of luck here. So I better play it safe. And within playing it safe, you turn this girl off because you do not honor the trust she puts in you. Yes, sir. Fuck yes. <laughs> what a sum up. What a sum up. For those of you that thought we got stuck in the weeds, even I thought we got stuck in the weeds for a second. Uh, you know, I can sense it. I can always sense when we got a little too hard of the micro. And you lose sight of the big macro thing here. But uh, oh, hold on, let me reset. It's just that I know that a lot of you often refer back to me in DMs on the gram or messages in the email saying, Adam, I love the stories. I love the micro stories. So keep telling them. So that's that's why I like to go into them. But that's the skill in podcasting, which is that if you dive into the micro, it's very easy to lose sight of where the hell you, what the fuck you were talking about. So that's why I get excited about that shit. Like when we can remember where we were. So, okay, were you playing it safe? Were you playing it so safe in that moment with that girl 
out of a place of neediness in which that you didn't want to fuck this up because in the potential of fucking it up, what would that mean for you? What would that mean for you? Never get to see this girl again. Ah, oh, man, I'm going to we can go down the laundry list of what that means. What that means is like how you view yourself, how you think you're going to, how you go back to your friends and talk to your friends about what happened to you, et cetera, et cetera. Where is this neediness coming from? Now, of course, I, I'm saying this was neither an X nor a tick. It's just a question mark. I don't know if you made this mistake. All I'm saying is that that would be my best guess if there was a mistake in the moment in terms of the neediness, in terms of you conveying some form of neediness in a physical moment. Did you play it too safe? And we talked about this. We talked about this in Potter 95. We talked about it in our one-hour session, which is that the danger for you is going too slow. And this is... This is something, do we talk about this now? I might just say it quick here. You, most, most guys think that the danger is in going too fast. No, 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 no. The, mo- the danger for most dudes that are acknowledging that they have deficiencies in their social skill set is going too slow because you are a Mr. Nice Guy because you are far too apt, far too inept in this skill set in progressing things and leading things that you just play so safe you play it so fucking safe that you do not honor the trust the girl puts in you from a sexual standpoint and so you turn her off that's most people that's most people so that's why that's that would be my best guess and that when i was telling that story from um the guitar girl and i played that uh and and uh, that's that's and that's why i played that story off was because at no point was I unwilling to lead it, despite receiving from the girl that she was a little bit shy as well, which I don't think this girl, and based on what Kay told me about this girl, she's not that shy. She's not definitely not as shy as the girl that I was talking about before. So, but even if, even if you are dealing with a very shy girl, that's no, that's no excuse to stop leading and to stop progressing and being the one to present the masculine frame. Provide that fire for her. Honor that trust for her. There's no excuse. So that's what I would say would potentially be the uh, potential uh, potential thing. So now that we can dive right back up to the macro of things in terms of our growing your neediness, you, you, have to be, you have to be able to do what we just did. The reason why we just did what we just done for the last, I don't know, 30 some minutes is because that is it. That is it in a nutshell. To be able to isolate where you are fucking up, where your neediness is coming in. It's everything. Because in order to grow out, outgrow your neediness, you must first identify where your neediness is. That's part one. So let's slide into part two here as to once you have identified this. So this is where I'm going to dive back to his message. Just to realign ourselves, just get ourselves, and also give me a bit of a breather because that was... That was, a, that was a hot 35 minutes right there, whatever, however long that's been. Okay, so. Mm, 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 mm. So, so let's just pick up the story here. So he went through that situation in which that he was just playing comfortably within himself. And I'm going to say that that is most likely what turned her off. I can't say for sure. I can't say for sure. To his best ability, he was most, he was probably just trying oh that was the other thing that was the other thing because he hadn't been with a girl sexually in three years prior either that was the other piece of the puzzle i forgot to mention at the beginning but i said i was going to mention but i forgot so that was the other thing so that also was what leads me to the idea of which i feel like he was probably playing a little too safe yeah and listen Kay, if if it never got beyond the make out whose fault's that whose fault's that if she's willing if she's willing right because it's not and that, oh, of course, like th- when I say the word fault, that's loaded. When I say the word fault, it's a loaded statement, loaded question, rhetorical question, because uh, there is no fault. If a girl is uncomfortable, you don't need to, put, there's no question, there's no conversation about progressing things. But I think you and I both know that this girl is most likely quite willing because uh, she's coming to you, this is the fourth time through. You guys had some physical, out- amorous, and aggressive uh, sexual in- encounters before, but didn't quite go to the sex. I think she's. Uh, I think she's uh, putting a bit of trust in you. I think she's putting a bit of trust in you. So I think now we can... Can you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. 
So she got cold after that. And this is now where we step out to the outgrowing of the neediness. I just want to read a few little bits from this. You know, she kept she kept saying, she was being real nice about it. She was being real nice. She's saying that what hasn't changed is how I feel about you, what's changed is my situation, which complicates things. And I'm not saying for any moment that there's not some part of her 50 unrelated to K that is affecting to this. I'm not saying that at all. I'm very sure that there are other things in her life that are also affecting this as well. I just don't think it's the big ticket. I think it's just uh, convenient things. I think, I think while I'm not denying her anxiety or depression, I feel like if Kay had been leading things in the way that she would have liked him to, I feel like she gets beyond that. That's what I'm saying here. Let's move beyond that now. <clears throat> so he says to me, since this conversation, I haven't reached back out to her. And at this time, I've ultimately decided that I need to step away from this girl. I feel this whole experience has exhausted me and made me forget who I am and progress and the progress I've been striving for. Plus, I can no longer handle truly handle not truly knowing what's going on and having to overthink it all the time. And it's just not healthy. This is it. This is the outgrowing of your neediness. At what point? At what point are you going to get to the stage? And I'm not talking to Kay here because he's just said it. I'm talking to everyone now. At what point are you going to get to the stage in your life in which that you're no well, lo, blah, blah, <laughs> in which you're no longer willing to dedicate and allocate time and energy and resources to these situations? You know, it's it's your neediness that is draining you of your life sustenance, your life energy that could be going to things that are far more important. You know, he's talking about the development of himself. He's talking about himself knowing himself. He's talking about what he's here to do in this life. You know, every second of the day you are thinking and that you are dedicating energy to what was it with this girl? What did I fuck up with this girl? Well, I need this girl so much. Why isn't this girl texting me back? Let me message this girl. How could I curate this message to be an even better message? Well, should I call her again? Should I try and set up for another date again? Let me talk to my friend about it. Every second of the day that you are dedicating to this situation, out of your neediness to get her back, out of your neediness to whether it to be just to get a sexual uh, transaction with her, you know, I'm not saying this is K. I'm just talking about all the different things that guys get into. Pick one. Pick your need. Pick your reason for why you are needily attached to this person. Every second that you dedicate towards that, note what that takes away from. Every second that you are focused on the bullshit in your life, you can't possibly de- be dedicating towards creating the awesome in your life. It's one or the other. It is a binary uh, equation here. It is binary. It is a zero-sum game in that if you are focusing your energy on your needy attachment, you cannot simultaneously be focusing your energy on creating a better life and a better person of yourself. can't be done. You have to make a choice. And so that's the outgrowing of your neediness. That's what I sense from Kev here. I sense him stepping up to a place in life in which that he's, he said here, I'm taking accountability. He said partial accountability. I, uh, I agree with that. I agree partial accountability in the sense that it's, I'm sure there is some part of her 50 that's playing into it. But to be honest, when he says partial, I hope he's taken up most of that partial I'm hope I'm hope the split is at least 80-20. I hope the split is at least 80-20, if not more. It should be a minimum 80-20 accountability. You know, 80% him, 20% her. I would say it's probably more than that though. But at an absolute minimum. At an absolute minimum. And the fact that he's at a place in life which he can step back. And this and this is maybe where we'll say way to Cree's message, in which that you can step back. You can step back and just take accountability because that's where your needy attachment ends. Your needy attachment ends at accountability. When you can take accountability for the fact that, well, if it was the case in which that I was not sexually progressing things fast enough because I was playing it safe out of my needy attachment and wanting to keep this girl in my life and not wanting to potentially fuck things up, I realized that was a mistake and that I have to let this girl go now. I have to let her go Because if I can't let her go and I just continue to fester on this, I cannot simultaneously be dedicating and investing energy in creating myself and my life in the way that I see fit 
and the desires and the dreams that I've laid out for myself. You can't be doing them simultaneously. So outgrowing your neediness, it's having that accountability to be able to step back. And yes, let's dive into crease. I've mentioned it enough now. Let's, I've been honey dicking you guys enough now. Let's do it. So, uh, oh, actually, perfect time to reset as well. Give me a sec. Okay, so I've got Cree's message up here on the gram. How do we tang one? Double Y tang one. Get there if you're not. Uh, he says to me, uh, uh, he says to me, I want to share some thoughts about something. I was talking to this woman when I was in Japan till I moved to Korea. After a few weeks of constantly talking to her, she stun- suddenly stopped calling me. So I thought, in quotes, maybe she just needs some time and space, in quotes. Then she started posting photos of her with other guys. I'm not sure what's going on with her life right now, but the best feeling in the world is not being jealous about it. I think I'm more mature now than I was before. I didn't feel any anger or frustration. Matter of fact, I was actually really happy for her. I haven't talked to her for almost two months, but I'm cool with it. I'm not needy or insecure, unlike when I was young. I feel free. I'm more compassionate to other people and open about dating and relationships. Reading self-improvement books and listening to your potters has helped me a lot. Thank you for giving unconditional love to the world and not asking anything for return. Isn't that just beautiful, man? Like, and I'm not talking about the last little bit about referring to me. Forget that bit. Forget that part of the message. Forget that even was even part of the message. What I'm talking about is isn't it, just, isn't it just bloody beautiful? Just absolutely refreshing. It's just refreshing from Anchorman to be able to listen to that. Like when we go when when we go through Kay's message and then we step to this, that's the play from there. That's the play from there. That's where I want Kay to be in two months' time. I want Kay to be in the place in two months' time in which that he can look back on this scenario and go, you know, I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her. Part of our growing your neediness is being happy for the person that left you behind. The person that left you behind obviously left you behind for a reason. And you have to accept that. It is so hard for us as human beings to accept that we were not enough for someone based on our experience, tactical skill set. I'm not talking about it in terms of your fundamental essence of a being. If you're all, and we've been on this many, many times, so I'm not going to dive into this fully now. But just know for those of you that are new that I'm not talking about being enough as a human being. What I'm talking about is being enough in terms of being able to provide what that person needs, right? That person, this person, this girl that that Cree was talking to, obviously at some level, to what percentage? I don't know. There's not enough context. Not, not in ref, definitely not compared to Kay's context. But at some level, he wasn't providing her of what she needed. And you can never argue with that. You can never argue with that. To what you can argue with me to what degree? And I'm not even going to argue because I don't know the context. I don't know to what degree. But I know of K, for almost for damn sure, 80 to, 80 to 20% here, that he was not providing her of what she needed to some degree. And so with that being said, once you acknowledge that and you can say that, oh shit, I wasn't able to provide what this person needed. I'll let him go because of that. I'll let him go because of that. And you can truly step back. You can step back from that interaction and acknowledge your own shortcoming, where your work lies, what you need to do, where you need to work from from beyond this point. And you can truly accept that and at the same time be happy for that person. That's the true hour growing. That's the true evolution into the next stage. It's one thing to be able to see the work that needs to be done. It's a one thing to, to go out all night long and meet person after person after person and get shut down after shut down after shut down. It's one, person to be, it's one thing to be able to do that. It is one thing to be able to go through that experience and walk out of it and not turn into a bitter, twisted fuck and to actually look at that and go, holy shit, there is light within this. There is something that I can take from this and actually move forward with. That's one thing. The next thing is to be able to look at all that experience and go, I'm happy for all those people. I'm happy for that girl. 
I'm happy for those girls and those guys that shut me down. I wish them the best in life. Man, like, oh, like, it's at that point. It's like it's there's so it's, there's almost like no words that come from the elation that I feel from that sentiment when I feel Cree say that when I say it myself. It's just the epitome of development. It is the epitome of self cultivation to not only honestly and willingly entertain a process of fire that will show you where you currently at in the most raw sense, the process of fire, whatever process you've chosen, but a process of fire, it shows you all the places you're fucking up, all the work you need to do. And then to be able to look at that, so you entertain that, you even, it takes a certain type of person to even be able to go into that process. But then you do go down that process, you come out of it, and then the next stage to be positive about it, to be able to say, oh, that was actually good for me. It was good for me to see all of my needy attachment. It was good for me to see all of my validation dependence. It was good for me to see all the ins and outs of my ego. That's one thing. But then the stage beyond that, to then actually honor the people that sent you that feedback and to actually send them love backwards. Most people cannot do that. Most people would walk out of a situation, like say, let's take K. Most guys would take like the lowly scrub, the lowly scrub lord fish would walk out of K's situation and say, fuck that girl. Fuck that girl for not messaging me back. Fuck that girl for moving on because because I was yeah I was a little bit off. I was a little bit off in my skill set. That's how most guys would proceed. But the fact that even K can step back and go, well, listen, I'm taking partial accountability for this. I'm, I'm and I can't waste any more time on this. I can't waste any more time thinking about her and what it could have been and my attachment to all these things. This life potential envisioned. No, I've got my I've got the path. I've got my process to go down here, and I'm gonna keep. Just keep fucking working. I get back on the path and start working again. That's. Can you see why that makes me so happy? Can you see why it makes me so happy when we look at Cree here? Most guys will walk out of Cree situation, and they would go, "Fuck this girl. She's she just stopped talking to me, and now she's posting up photos of other guys. She's hanging out with other guys. Fuck that. Girl. What was I not good enough? What I could." fuck this guy I just, you just see it you just see it just this toxicity is so the toxicity avenues are so ready but that's what makes it so impressive that's what's so impressive about someone who can deny the avenue of toxicity and walk the path of light in which that you just wish that person well anyway and you actually thank them for the lessons they provided you I think why I'm riding this high so big right now is because it's so far few in between. Even amongst my own clients, even amongst the people that I deal with on a day to day, it's 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 rare. Mezurashi, it's rare. <laughs> it's uh, it's a special quality. And if I think back on my own journey for a sec, I'm just. Yeah, here, let's go on this story. Let's go on this story. I know you guys are the stories. <laughs> ABC Kids story time. So there was a situation. I remember I remember this situation. That's why I want to tell this story. I remember the exact girl, the exact interaction in which that I went through this exact lesson. And uh, it's a long story. It's a long bloody story. But at the time, it was the greatest day two of my life. I've since had a few day twos that have eclipsed that. But at the time, it was the big. I was. It was the greatest girl I'd ever met at that point through cold approach. Definitely by far the sexiest girl, uh, in an emotional way as well. Just lighting me up. But it was by far the best interaction of my life, just from top to bottom. Uh, I've talked about this interaction as well, by the way. And actually, there's footage of it. <laughs> there's footage of. It. I can't remember which video of it is. But uh, let me try and for those of you that want to go back to it. Uh, if you go to, fuck, it's the it's in the best of the best playlist. It's, oh, but the full interaction is not. Oh, but it's not even a full interaction. It's because I didn't have, I wasn't mic'd up for it. Basically, now I, I, it's going to derail the story here. But basically, it's, uh, I know in the video, there is some footage of it from the learn to read her feminine energy video. There's some footage of it, but I think there's more of 
footage in it from Oh, that's right. That's the video. Uh, all you need to get started. I think that's in the best of the best playlist as well, but it's like, it's a very old video. It's like right back at the start of the channel. All you need to get started. It's about, it's a beginner's video. And basically it was at the end of a real, it was a, a shit fight of a day, just like super hot in Melbourne. I'd approached 15 people that day, 15 girls that day. She was the 15th girl. It's like 35 degrees. I was wearing pants. Shouldn't have been. And I was just, I barely even got myself over there. I saw her and I could, my eyes were barely open. I was so drained. It's like the end of the day. But I'm like, fuck it. Fuck it. P, P, start recording this. I don't even know why he hadn't recorded any of the other interactions. That I wasn't even mic'd up. And I just said to him, for some reason, just, just get your phone out and record this. I go up. I approach her. And bang. I just, it was laser. It was just so much, so much, so much laser energy between us right from the beginning. And you can see the open. And then, hang on a second. Why? Why is my phone saying I need to reset? Didn't we just reset? The fuck? Hang on a sec. Let me just check the camera. I don't know if that's a true reset. For some reason, I feel like it has not been 12 minutes. I don't know. So we'll keep rolling. Anyways, so I stop her. She's by far the moment we make eyes. It's just like, oh, this is my dream girl, man. Sir. This is what life, this is, this is what dreams are made. Like, that's what's going in my mind right now. And like, so we have this amazing interaction right off the bat. Uh, and she's playing some hardball. I take her from the side street to this, uh, to the bench next to us. I take her from the bench up to the state library. We had this incredible interaction in the state library where shit got so real. She was talking about me, some of the deepest shit. I take her up to this little, uh, isolated little covey up in the balcony. And we're just talking some shit about life deep shit i then take her down uh we go down to uh qv we do we get some water i'm fucking around with the people in the uh in the supermarket we're having so much fun then we walk down like a half an hour walk down to the river we chill by the arbory about down by the river and we're just which is vibing so much at this point we've probably been together for an hour or so and then we go up to the and then we walk to the botanics after that it takes us like 20, 15 minutes, 20, 20 minutes to get there. We sit down in front of this like giant clock garden and the wind is just blowing. And we're just sitting next to each other on these steps and I just feel the moment and I was like, you need to close your eyes right now. She closed her eyes, going, I kiss her. Fuck. One of the, one of the greatest, just, there's no words for it. It's like, it's the, it's the crescendo of a day, is the crescendo of a lifetime of fucking up, just fucking up, and then going through the process of changing myself. Like, you should imagine, 18-year-old Adam could have done, 19-year-old Adam couldn't have done this. 19-year-old Adam was in the fucking beanbag, eating pizza, hadn't had sex in two years, hadn't had a day in two years. Now he's doing this shit. What? It's just the crescendo in a moment. Of course, in macro of my journey, but also it's it's the girl that I'd always wanted to meet. It was it was a reflection of all the work I'd put in to be able to just get to to be able to take it to this point. Now, of course, like I said she was my ten on an emotional level, she's my ten physically as well, like absolute dying piece as well. And I'm just like sitting there making making out with this girl, and and we just met today. And it's like holy shit! <laughs> and it's like just blowing my fucking mind. And that that's what's it's a crazy thing that I remember I took a photo with her holding a leaf. Still have that photo today. And uh like us holding it the, just like hand by hand. And uh you know what? You know what this and this is the reason why I'm telling the story is because I got super needy after that. I'd never experienced this level of girl in my life before or anything even close to how this even came about. You know, I'd I'd been on several ca- I've been involved in many casual relationships before that. And had no problem with this, but this is just the next level. It was just the next level of girl that, and you know, I was sending her like video messages. This is before like, uh, before Graham was really big. This is before like you would use Instagram a lot. Uh, so I was sending her video messages through text, MMSs they were called. I think they're still called that. But anyways, and, and, uh, and I just sent a lot of needy vibes. I was over texting her, even though I didn't make this mistake with any other girl not not to this degree not to this degree of course i made it before before this but you know i was riding a high before that but it's like all of a sudden like my principles were going out the window in the post and uh <laughs> i never saw her again we had a few back and forth i tried my best to try and organize a day two of her and i just and when i look back on it 
I remember, and the reason why I'm telling this story right now is because during that week or two of us trying to set, I remember we had actually had a phone call in that time as well, trying to set shit up. But I remember in that time, and she invited me at one point to go out, to go and meet up with her friends, but I turned it down because I didn't want that. But I was just, there's a lot of other stuff. I just, no, it's not part of this. It is part of the story, but it's not relevant to the point I'm making, which is that when I, things were over, when it had been like two weeks and she wasn't responding to my messages anymore, I had a decision to make. I had a decision to make of whether do I let this girl go that had been the epitome of my work up until this point in which that I had displayed the very best of myself and also then the very worst of myself afterwards. It's like, do I get mad at her? Do I get butthurt about this entire situation? Do I just, do I beat down on myself? Can I evolve myself to this, the place of being able to strip my 50 down and look at what, look at the amazing shit you did, Adam, to even bring in this situation, but then also look at what we need to improve next time. Can I do that? I remember lying in my Airbnb. I was living in Melbourne at the time. And I remember lying in my Airbnb one night. It was a hot summer's night. Just looking at my phone, looking at the text message thread between her, looking at the two previous unread, unresponded messages from me. And I said to myself, Adam, you need, you need to let this girl go. Because I was checking my phone every fucking hour. Like every like six, six hours, every half day, like how she responded, how she responded. And not even if she just has responded, it was more like, how could I improve my previous text? Was, did I say the right thing? Was I, could, I, could I send a better text? And it's like, no, Adam, 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 you fucked up. Accept it. You fucked up. Please accept the fact that you need to move on. If you can't acknowledge that you need to move on at this point, regardless of how much of her 50 is playing in, and for Kay listening to this, listen, I sent her a lot. I definitely conveyed the neediness by over texting and sending way too much in the video message as well. But also, I did. I can acknowledge that there was probably some stuff on her 50 as well. She was living outside the city at the time, and it was hard for her to get into the city. But was that a deal breaker? No. No, she would be able to get over that hurdle if I hadn't conveyed those neediness, for sure. So, of course, I never play into that. And it's like, I'm looking at this going, Adam, Adam. This is a key stage for us. You rode the high, but then you fucked up. And to show me, and this is me talking to me right now, to show me that you are you have evolved and that you have outgrown your neediness to this girl, I need you to cut tie. I need you to delete this message thread. I need you to delete her number out of your phone. I need you to move on because you just keep looking at this text message thread. You keep coming back to this. And it just shows me that you have you have not learned your lesson. You have now not outgrown. You have not outgrown your neediness. So show me. Show me that you've outgrown your neediness by deleting her out of your phone and deleting the text message thread. And I remember on that hot summer's night in my Airbnb private room, and uh, the window was open. The wind. Oh fuck! I remember so. Oh man, it's probably like 10 p.m. at night. The wind was blowing, but it was still hot. And I remember sweating. And I remember looking at the text message thread, and you hold down. And it brings up the options to press delete. And, I, and I'm like my body, if you're watching that on YouTube right now, I'm tensing up right now because I remember the tension that I had in that moment. And I pressed delete. I deleted the text message thread. <sighs> oh, shit. You'd need to go into the YouTube version and watch what just happened. Like I'm smiling so much. The relief. The relief, but I'm almost like starting to I've not cry, but almost cry. Like the emotions, I'm getting so emotional right now because it was truly the moment in which that I eclipsed my own neediness and I never once acted that way of a girl ever again. When I made the decision to delete her out of my phone through the text message thread and then the contact, I deleted her contact. So I no longer had... And because now I didn't have her on Instagram, I didn't have her on Facebook. Once I deleted her out of my contact book, that's it. I have no means of contacting this girl again. And I can no longer fester on her messages and relive that moment again with her. Like in terms of what I could potentially do better in that sense. 
The relief, man. The relief. It feels so good right now. Because, and I, th- I guess the reason why it feels so good is not just because of how it felt in that moment. I'm sure in that moment there was relief, but to be honest, it probably hurt quite a bit as well. It was probably quite painful to know that, oh, fuck, I, that's it. This girl that was the greatest girl up in, in my life up until this point, never, never met a girl this crazy, physically attractive or emotionally attractive either. Holy shit. And you can't contact her anymore. Live with it move on and grow and so from that point on I never made those mistakes from that point on I, that was the point in which I truly can recognize in my journey that I outgrew my neediness that I never once acted with another girl in a in a way in which that would turn her off because of needy attachment I was no longer attached to girls at that point I can truly say at that point yeah, I had to go through that. And I had to go through that. And I was, and also just to prove it, just to prove it, if you want to look for the proof, go watch that I had outgrown it. Go to the best of the best playlist on YouTube and search for the video of the greatest day two of my life. And it's a video of me discussing what happened in Miami with the greatest girl, with the next greatest day two. And I'm just going to leave that there. There's the proofs in that video right there. For the OGs that have seen that video and that have been hit by the power of that, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that haven't, whoa, whoa, you better go watch that video after this. It's just uh, the path is powerful. And I can truly say at that point, you know, it's interesting. There's, it's, it's got to the point now where uh, <laughs> it's like it's almost I'm so cold with the – I'm so anti-needy attachment – that it's almost to the point where I give so, so, such less of a fuck, so low of a fuck. My, my giving of fuckery is so low that I have to force myself to go out on day twos of girls nowadays. Like there, there are so many unanswered DMs in my gram right now uh, or just in my phone book right now of girls that I'm probably supposed to go out on a day two with, but I just keep saying to them, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you, but I just... I can't give, I don't give a fuck, like, give me a sec, let me clarify there, it's not that I don't give a fuck about them, it's that I don't give a fuck about having to go out with them, I don't, I don't, I don't care about, about uh, having to be validated by them, by being validated by society, by being validated by my own ego, my, that, let me say this, the part of my ego that required validation from women died that day when I deleted the girl out of my phone book. The part of me that so, the part of me that sought validation from women died in me that day. From that point on, I have never once felt the need to go on a day two of a girl past that point. I've never once felt the need to have sex with a girl, to get the sex, to get a relationship out of a girl, to do anything under the umbrella of needy attachment, to keep a girl. I've never never felt the need to keep a girl past that point. That that part of Adam died that day. And it's just amazing to look back on. Because we never really talked about it in this way. It's like, you know, so well, yeah, it's not that I don't care about uh, these these girls. It's not that I don't care about them. It's just I, I just don't care about having to get anything from them. And therein lies the lesson of this entire podcast. It's not that I don't care about them. It's that I don't care about having to get anything from them. I don't need anything from them, and neither should you. When you play this back out to your lives, you look at Cree's message, he can well wish her, because he doesn't need anything from her. For Kay, moving on from this girl, the way that he moves on is I truly recognizing I didn't need anything from I never need anything from her. And the fact now that I can't get anything from her, that's how you move forward. You know, at no point should you... At, at no point should you be attached to needing anything from this girl, whether it comes in the form of physical or mental or society-based stimulation, validation. But beyond that, when you can no longer get it, move on. Move on. Let that part of your ego die. And the way that it dies is that you have to, the, the proof, you have to be able, you have to prove to yourself that you can do it. Now, am I saying to Kay that he has to delete this girl out of his phone book and delete the text message threads and delete all contact? No. That's what I had to do because that's me. That's my personality. I am a balls-to-the-wall personality type person. 
I am an all in or all out. I am the type of person that says, if I'm going to do cold showers every day, I'm doing cold showers every day for the rest of my life. It's it's never, I'm doing, I'm going to see if I can. It's never, I'm going to do cold showers for a month. No, it's either we're doing this or we're not doing this. Don't fuck around me out of here. It's either you're going to make this this decision. You're going to choose that. Listen, you're just going to prove to me that you are the type of person that has let the part of your ego die that I don't need this person anymore. You let go of your need attachment. Show me. Don't show me in in a half-assed way. Show me for reals. Show me in the in the most raw sense. And you know, when I said before about the cold showers for life, I've been doing cold showers every single morning for over a year. And like we're in April now. So hold on, January, February, March, April. January, February, March, April. I've been doing it for a year and one month for sure. It's actually probably longer than that. But I know that I started every single day for sure. I know for sure I've been doing them every day since March last year. Because I remember the boot camp. It was a boot camp in March that I remembered that, uh, oh, holy shit, I've been doing this for like a, f- a few weeks in a row. Now I'm going to do it for life. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it for life now. <laughs> Makes sense. So that's my personality. All I'm saying is that's my personality. I, I have to, uh, I'm an extremist in that way. I'm an extremist. And I think the, uh, the results show for it. The evolution into who I've become shows for it which is why I love the extremist way of things. I'm, I've got an addictive personality in that way. You know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It's very, holy shit. Holy shit. Like, how long do you want this potter to go for? We can go for two hours if you want, but there's, a, there's another thing for proof in the pudding. There's a girl I was talking to uh, the other day. Uh, should I say her name? I'm going to call her T. Ha, hey, the first female T. Oh, she knows who she is. So there's no point. There's no reason why I can't say her name, but I, I refer to her as T anyway. But you know, we live on the other, we live on opposite side of the world. Me and this girl and I, we live on opposite side of the world. And even though we've never met before, it's a weird thing that we share a connection. You know, we've we've uh, we've been following, we've been talking back and forward on and off for like the last year and a half. She lives in the states. I live in Australia. So. Following my principles, I'm I'm never gonna try and dive in on her. Like it's not the right time. It's no even if she was living down the street from me, it's not the right time for me to dive in on one person. But for sure, even just to enter to see what's there, I I know it's not a good time. It's not right. Like it doesn't make sense. Like an interaction needs to be needs to be skin to skin. So so I've just been keeping her at a distance. You know, we check in every now and again, and she gets that. But she sent me a message the other day, like in response to one of my gram stories, just saying like in a real funny way, like, can I just date you? Like lol, like with capital law, like, can I just, can we just get this shit going, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I said to her, if you're okay with dating a blue moon. And, you know, like, that's very, very cryptic. And she goes, and she said something like, oh, hold on, hold on, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. I'll get this. Uh, she's cool. I'll get her response because it's actually a very cool uh, case study what I'm talking about here and just neither of us. This is perfect because this is a this is a girl who's not attached either. So you're, what you're going to see here is the culmination, the epitome of two people who are unattached to each other, both in the male and female perspective. Maybe we'll wrap up the pot with this. So, this is cool. So yeah, it was an Instagram story about me talking about what unconditional love truly means, and she just responded in a funny way to say, "Can can I just date you, lol?" And uh, as in, like, can we just get the shit going already? And I said to her, "If you're okay with dating a blue moon," and she said, uh, "That means I'll always be working walking under the moon." Deal. And that's a bit of an inside story between us in terms of we always send each other videos about us walking under the moon together, like when we're walking under the moon. Anyways, I responded to that by saying, well, that worked a little too well in terms of like uh, the play on words between the moons. But then she took that, she didn't quite see that's what I was talking about. And she responded by saying, uh, not everything has to be hard. I know what I want. And so when I, she obviously interpreted me saying, oh, that worked a little too well, as in like, oh, she was... That was just a little too easy for us to get things started. But, you know, to 
recognize that we both want to be with each other or at least want to see where things could go. But I actually just was referring to the play on words. <laughs> but of course, I obviously meant that. It's like, like this is both. It's there. They're both there. And I asked her, I said, yeah, like, first up, uh, what do you think I meant by blue moon? When I said to her, if you're okay of dating a blue moon, what do you think my, you meant? She, uh, I meant by that. I just want to see if she understood what I meant. And she, uh, she took a couple of swings, which were both really far off. She thought I was talking about a, a blue beer, a blue moon beer or something. And the other one was, uh, that was like a, guess, like a joke guess. But the other guess was, um, <laughs> what did she say? Uh, the other second being how rare you are, just like an additional blue moon that occurs. <clears throat> And I just associated with us always being able to walk under the moon. And so I said to her, no, nah, it's neither of the two. One, because I don't know what that beer is. But the second one is that I'm not egotistical enough to think I'm a rare human being. I'm just one of seven billion. Now, the reason why I said dating me is like dating a, rare, dating a uh, blue moon is because you'll rarely see me. But when you do, I'll make sure it's special. And when I said that to her, she responded by saying, and that's okay too. I'm in a phase of my life right now where I'm trying to figure out myself. So my mentality isn't focused on seeking someone to give me their undivided attention, but more of doing our own thing. And when we do come together, we can share what we've learned. But still, I'd always feel like I'm walking under the moon. Fuck, that's what you want in a girl. That's what you want in the girl, for sure. Shit. <laughs> you know, that's... So, what? when I said to you... What, the reason why I wanted to, to paint this out is because what you're seeing right there is a man and a woman who have let go of their needy attachment to the other. They don't need each other. And we're saying it right off the get. We're saying right off the get that like before things even have a chance to manifest into something unwanted, that we both just state right from the get, like, what's up? You know, and that's, that's the case. That's the case for all girls in my life. And I say the same thing to all girls, that because of my journey in life right now, you know, if, if we're going to get involved together sexually, it's going to be like a blue moon. You know, you're not going to see me that often because my number one is my purpose in life. And that takes up a shit ton of my time recording these podcasts, editing these podcasts, coaching people daily, boot camps, to the stuff of the website, all this stuff, my own personal physical pursuits, my own personal mental pursuits, the meditation, the reading, everything and anything, all the stuff that I'm doing. Like, listen, I can't prioritize. You're, never, you're not going to be a high priority. You're not going to be because you're not going to overcome my purpose. But if there is something there and if you can accept that, in the time that I do have to spend with you, I'll make sure it's special because that's how I am. Whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it fully. Wherever I am, I'm there fully. Whoever I'm with, I'm with you fully. And that's how I live life. So that's what I'm saying to this girl is that, listen, if you can accept that, then yeah, we can do it when the time's right. Now, obviously, we, we live in different worlds almost. Like we're so far apart from each other. But even if we were close, that's what I'm saying to her. Like even if you were down the street from me, that's how we would be. We have a blue moon relationship. And the fact that she responded to me in that way, it just lights me up. It fucking lights me up. It's it's everything that I want to have in a mentality from a girl. Let me reset it. So let's sum it up here, my friends. You want to talk about outgrowing your neediness? First off, you must analyze and identify where your neediness lies. For Kay, his neediness for sure, at least in my opinion, lies in the fact of playing it safe. And that's how it manifests. Now, as to actually, hold up a second. I can't tell, I actually can't tell him where that deep seed is. Only he truly knows why he wishes to play it safe. Is it because he hasn't had a lot of sexual experiences, if any, in the last three years? Could be. Very well could be. I actually can't determine that for him. Only he knows. But what I can say for sure is that you must analyze and identify where your neediness lies and how it's manifesting and is definitely manifesting for him. In the sense of, well, I'm playing it safe. And when you play it safe with a girl, you, you, you disrespect that trust. You don't, you dishonor the trust she places in you, turns her off, for sure. Okay? With Cree, I don't know. I don't have enough context with Cree. But he's obviously doing something. 
there's obviously something going on there. And even if not in that one micro situation, we all deal with it. We all deal with it. So in some way, shape or form, if we're honest with ourselves, and that's the thing, in order to be able to identify your neediness and where it lies and your needy attachments, you must be honest with yourself. You must have the humility to be able to look at yourself, strip down your 50 and look at where are the improvements to be made? Where am I attached to this person? How is it coming out? And how am I going to move forward? If you can do that, you will outgrow it. Second part of outgrowing your neediness is being able to, in the post, not only let go of that person, but being able to wish well that person. Well, wish. You have to be able to let go of that person. It's one thing to be able to... Mm, excuse me. It's one thing to be able to identify your neediness. It's another thing to be able to let go of it. When you can let go of it, for me, it was having to delete that girl out of my phone book and delete our text message threads. That was my letting go. I'm not saying you have to do that, but you have to do something. You have to do something to be able to show yourself that whether it is, I'm no longer just going to speak to this girl. I'm going to take a month off. I'm going to take three months off, whatever it is for you. You have to be able to show yourself that I can let go of this person. That's step two. Step three is being able to wish that person well. And let, and I I hold no I hold no toxicity towards that girl all those years ago, right? That greatest girl, that, was that story I told you, I had to leave that girl in my phone book. I I've, I want the best for her in life. I, I hope I hope she is. I hope she found a guy that was much better than me at that time. Straight afterwards, I hope she met the next better evolved version of myself in a guy that wasn't going to be needy with her. That's what I want for for her. I for all the girls. I am so grateful to all the girls that had to put up with my shit as I was learning the social dynamic skill set. I am so grateful to all those girls that had to put up with an uncalibrated, rushed as fuck, unscented, ungrounded Mr. Nice Guy Adam back in the day. I am so grateful. Never once did I harbor any form of toxicity towards those girls that did not want to see me again after a day two, did not want to see me again after a one night lay, did not want to see me again after even potentially a, a few weeks together. And any, I've never looked down upon those. I've never once thought, fuck this girl. I've never. I've always thought, thank you so much for showing me who I truly am. Thank you so much for allowing me to learn who I am in relation to you. Because now I can bring a better version to the next person. And I only wish that you could meet the next better version as well. That you can meet someone that can take care of you much better than I could. Because I couldn't. And I fully acknowledge that, right? You identify your neediness, you let go of it, and then you go beyond that point to now release toxicity and allow love and joy to flow through to that person. That's it. That's how you outgrow your neediness. Yes, sir. (laughs) Yes, sir. Listen, there's something to be said for endorphins. There's something to be said for a uh, a rush of dopamine. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was uh, I did a coach. I was coaching before this. I normally try not to schedule coaching sessions before uh, potos because I know how much potos drain me because I just invest so much of my being into this one to one and a half hour session with you guys. But I d- I did a infield breakdown session with a dude before, and at about the thirty minute mark or thirty maybe it's forty five minute mark. I was starting to get a bit lightheaded because if, I'm not sure if you guys could tell, I infused a shit ton of energy into this uh, potter and I was getting a bit lightheaded and I, to, even to the point where I was about to tell you guys, I was about to say, I'm getting a little lightheaded here. But when the thought ran through my mind, I was like, don't you dare because if you, if you acknowledge that, I'm sure you're going to fall into that. So I, I, I just like, said, fuck it, I'm, not, I'm just going to push through. And then when I started telling the story about me having to kill off that neediness inside of me and allowing that part of my ego to die in myself with that greatest girl at the time, I got a, I got a, I got a second wind. When that dopamine got released, when the endorphins, when I got that full release of how good it felt to, to have evolved and eclipsed myself in that moment, and I felt the true, the true chemical change in my mind. I, that lightheadedness left me. Like When I say lightheaded, I don't just mean like a little low energy. I mean like I was about to pass out. Like I was like, I was like almost seeing stars for a little bit just because of the energy expenditure. Uh, so it's, and it's also like when you're trying to 
balance both macro and micro perspectives while you're trying to dive in on a micro story while also maintaining where the fuck we are in this macro plot. It requires so much brain power. That's why I do the matcha. So uh, I should have triple shot. I should have triple shot. I need a triple shot. Uh, I triple shot next time. I thought it was going to be a big one. Oh, uh, shit. So anyways, guys, I thank you for, if you're at this point, I thank you so much for riding for this long. And I hope you got something from this. If you did, I know this is going to be in the outro. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear in an email at boulderger.com on the gram at Tang one And yeah, yeah the, outro, the outro is going to come now, but just thank you so much for being here. I'm going to roll that outro, outro now. Ja. Yo, thank you so much for listening to this pod, my friends. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to drop a thumbs up down below on YouTube. Drop me a comment down below. And if you are listening to this, the best place to reach out to me is at Uitang1 on the gram, double Uitang1. Send me a DM there. You can also send me deeper context, deeper emails at boldojo.com, which is what this pod is brought to you by. As always, where you guys can pick up that ebook. Crash course to kick ass day game, get your day game sorted. You can book one on one Skype coaching, crack those limiting beliefs, create action plans, get it done. And also, uh, of course, the boot camp. Of course, the boot camp. Uh, if you guys are looking to book in for those immersive day game foundational boot camps, you can do so through boulders.com. Of course, US trip coming up. For those of you in the US, slide me in uh, New York, June 7 and 8th. One position available on that. Yeah, let me know. Also, if you'd like to support this potter, you can do so by donating anything that you wish through the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash A-D-A-M-O-O-I. Anything you donate through that is extremely appreciated and it really just blows me away. So thank you so much, guys. Yeah, this was a session of sessions. This is a session like an old timer in which I feel like we dived into so much shit, so much personal shit as well on my end, but also from my client's ends. And I just thank you all so much. I know I did in the actual episode, but... It's, it's my honor, it's my pleasure, it's my journey to be able to produce this content for you. And if there's even one of you out there that got something from this, just let me know. Just let me know. I greatly appreciate that. So I wish you all the best on your journeys. Much peace and much joy. Ciao.